Hello everybody, John Flaubert here. We're here to talk about two different cognitive development theories. One is by Marsha Baxter Magolda, and the other is by uh, Mary Belenke and her colleagues, uh, Clinchy, Goldberger, and Tarul. So um, I'm just going to give a brief introduction and some, some comments on those theories, and then you can get into reading about them, and, um, and we'll discuss more. So Marsha Baxter Magolda, um, who is uh, just recently retired from Miami of Ohio, conducted a longitudinal study for her particular theory, and she began it roughly 25, 30 years ago as of uh, today. And what she did was she had 100 students, presumably at Miami of Ohio, although um, it certainly could have been from another institution, and she interviewed them every single year. And she interviewed not only during college, but after college and beyond. And she was able to keep a very high uh, percentage of those participants remaining in her study and has really given us a view to how, uh, how people develop over time cognitively uh, as they experience life, the challenges, ups and downs, those sorts of things. Um, she had several different assumptions that underlied her theory. Uh, and th it's essentially a theory of ways of knowing um, so uh, ways of knowing being how we uh, look at the world from a, from a cognitive perspective. And she said that ways of knowing are socially constructed and best understood through qualitative or naturalistic inquiry. So that is her bent. Um, it's not uh, the right or wrong one, I think, necessarily. I think just uh, people will, some people who are more empirical, um, who uh, are more in the positivist camp might not um, like her methods as well as uh, someone who's more postmodern. So make sure you're looking at through those lenses. Um, she found in her study of different kinds of cognitive development, different levels that people pass through, that um, they're gender related but not dictated by gender. So she found that most men went about one particular pattern, most women went about a different particular pattern in their cognitive development, but there's no um, bright lines between those. You um, make sure that as you read it, you get a sense of how she studied people and that some went one way, some went another to reach eventually the same place, um, but perhaps do some, some different uh, twists and turns. So, um, Think about how it might be alike and different from Perry. Uh, she certainly studied many more women. In fact, uh, as, as far as I understand it, equal numbers of men and women and took a look at how they view the world. Um, and you might also think about what are some uses for her model in uh, programming outside the classroom and educating students outside the classroom. So um, just a, a, a thought there. Belenke came along, um, and from my perception, largely in reaction to Perry's focus on men, and Belenke focused solely on women and their epistemological, uh, their cognitive development. And she studied, they studied not just college women, but also women in a community counseling center um, were her participants. And one of the things that added was uh, women who aren't necessarily in college and in that, having that experience. Um, she did find, I think, a, a, a broader way, a variety of ways of knowing and processes that uh, women go through as they learn to understand the world. Uh, I'd encourage you to take a look and compare and contrast that with Perry's theory um, and see the ways in which that expands our understanding of women's development. I believe it was about 130, 140 participants she had, many um, at the roughly, you need to look it up, 20, 30 from the community center, I believe. And um, it, all of the people at the very most basic level of cognitive development were from that community center. Um, none of them were in the college sample. And so I think she exposes us to a, um, a group of women who aren't necessarily in college and progressing through. Now, in that community counseling center, um, many of the women who were in what's called silence, the very beginning stage of Belenki, had experienced a, a, an extreme uh, trauma situation. So one of the things to think about is when people uh, experience trauma, sometimes their level of cognitive development, 
not their intelligence, but the way they look at the world, the level of cognitive development um, regresses a bit. Um, and largely, they're working on other issues at the time rather than their cognitive development. So something to think about. I, um, I encourage you to learn these theories, learn them for all their depth and complexity, and think about how they apply to students with whom you work. Uh, I think they're valuable theories that add a lot to, to everything we do, and I encourage you to uh, give them a, a, a good study.